Good evening, everyone. I'm starting. I'm calling this meeting of the Germantown Board of Education order at 7 p.m. And I ask that you join me in standing if you're able to say the Pledge of Allegiance and for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Official meeting notification, Mr. Holmes. Public notice of all meetings is given by communication from the superintendent's office to those news media who have filed a written request for such notice and the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel, Northwest Now, and Express News. Public notice has also been posted in all schools and buildings throughout the district on the school district's website and on the cable television channel 96. Thank you. Roll call, Jane. Satterberg. Here. Medved. Here. Lowe. Here. Mortis. Here. Barney. Here. Speed. Here. Board Member Larson absent. Thank you. We're on to the approval of the agenda. Second. Discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Item three, citizen comments. I don't think we have anybody signed up, do we? No. Would anybody like to speak tonight? Come on up. Good evening and welcome. Please state your name. My name is Rose Dobrogowski. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of Kurt Raguzzi. Um, I just wanted to say what he had helped me with when he was a Germantown varsity coach. He believed in me when nobody else gave me the opportunity. Um, since he was coach my senior year, um, I accomplished uh, first team all conference, second team all conference, uh, first team all suburban, and honorable mention all state as a DH. Um, with his help and support, I also now became the JV head coach of Whitefish Bay. And without his support and without his um, time, I would not have accomplished anything that he uh, did as a coach. So, Great. That's what I said. Thank you. Thank you. Would anybody else like to speak tonight? Okay, moving on to item four, approval of the December 16th, 2019 Board of Education mm -hmm meeting minutes, the December 16th, 2019 closed session meeting minutes, and the January 14, January 15, and January 16, 2020 closed session minutes. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve the minutes from December 16th, Board of Education, December 16th, closed session, and January 14, 15, and 16th, Second. Do we have discussion? No discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Item five, reports and information items, student representative report. Mr. Holmes. Avi. On December 17th, MacArthur fifth graders went on a field trip to first stage. MacArthur DI teams competing in the service learning challenge have developed a community service project to benefit a local group that promotes physical activity called the Running Rebels. They organized a basketball skills challenge at the GHS Fieldhouse on January 19th. On Wednesday, January 22nd, the third graders had a field trip to the Shower Arts Center, the fifth graders had a concert, and the kindergartners went to first stage. The day before break, on December 20th, the GHS Choir visited Rockfield to sing holiday songs in classes. Rockfield also had Running Reindeer that day, where teachers rotated through all the classrooms and read their favorite holiday stories. On January 13th, students dressed up like they were stuck in the 80s, and on the 23rd, first graders went on a field trip to River Edge Nature Preserve. Throughout the month, Amy Bell fourth graders worked on helping the entire school focus on service and helpfulness through a reflection on the many service activities Amy Bell has done and what can be done in the future. On December 17th, fourth graders went to first stage, and on the 19th, first graders had a music concert. The Thanksgiving food drive yielded 14 large boxes of food, which will be distributed locally. The County Line Junior Art Docents visited the art museum on December 13th. The leadership team decorated Christmas cookies with Ellen's home of Germantown residents. On January 13th through the 17th, the leadership team also had a, held a pet drive to benefit the Washington County Humane Society. Over the course of the month, students have been focusing on perseverance to add to their empathy tree. Kennedy Middle School teachers continue to develop a mentoring program impacting 40 students at KMS. The mentors and mentees enjoyed a special holiday, lunch, and game and game time together on Monday, December 16th. 
the 6th, 7th, and 8th grade choirs presented a concert at the GHSPAC on January 9th. Selections featured various student vocal soloists as well as a special African drumming accompaniment to one of the 8th grade pieces. Each house participated in a service project to benefit the community in honor of the memory of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on Monday, January 20th. And Ski Club had their last outing at Little Switzerland on Wednesday, January 21st. Germantown High School, this is a long one. Uh, GHS had an exciting week before the start of a long winter break. The annual Winter Wish Week organized by Student Council involved spirit days and deliveries of fuzzy socks, hot chocolate, candy, and donuts to, to students all over the building. On January 8th, the GHS choir program hosted Impromptu, an a cappella group from UW Eau Claire, and on the 11th, the choir sang at the Admirals game. Powerlifting, palms, hockey, and gymnastics are now in the crucial portion of their competitions. Girls basketball continues to have a very strong season. GHS Dramatic Impact is putting together their production of Legally Blonde, the musical, which will take place on March 6th through the 8th. Most recently, high schoolers had exam week, which went just as planned without any weather-related issues this year. And today was the first day of the semester. Wonderful. Questions, comments from the board? All right. Well, you're more than welcome to stay. Yeah, I think you got to go, right? Yeah. So thank you for being <laughs> thank here. Thank you. Take care. Thanks, Avi. Uh, item B, early graduate update. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Uh, the board uh, annually is informed of the number of students that uh, qualify for early graduation. Those students have met all the requirements to to achieve that. Uh, I congratulate those uh, three individuals and their names are released at the same time that all other graduates are accomplished uh, that as well. So uh, it's actually, uh, I was surprised, three is kind of a low number. For it's very us. low. Yeah, I this year. We usually average around seven, but this year's group was around three. But I just wanted to give the board an update that you did have three early graduates this year. Great. Questions, comments from the board? Okay, moving on to item C. Elementary attendance boundary parent meeting update. Can you click on that for me, Rhonda? And open it. Mr. Holmes. Yes. Uh, I would like to do a report for uh, constituents in the board in regard to how our meeting went on January 8th. We did hold the district-wide elementary uh, attendees, attendance boundaries public meeting and seeking input from those people in attendance. We had approximately 14 individuals in uh, the crowd. Uh, it was attended by uh, our transportation chair, Tom Barney, board president, Bob Soderberg, myself, and our district's uh, guide K-12 consultant. Um, in uh, the packet that was provided, I would like to start with the um, first page in regard to grandfathering and the cost associated with transportation. Those were the two main topics of conversation for the evening. Uh, a lot of uh, the 14 parents were there because of the results that had developed. It, by far, uh, the majority of parents who have students that were eligible for grandfathering were wanting to see grandfathering take place for uh, kindergarten through fourth grade students. Um, uh, there were questions brought up about if we just moved to uh, allowing fourth graders to grandfather or no grandfathering at all. Uh, they asked for us to contact Rightway to get a more uh, thorough report from them and estimates in regard to those things. Uh, not only did we do that, we also informed the people in attendance that we would have Mr. Erickson do an analysis of the transportation cost and help break those things down for folks so that they could better see that. Um, so with that information provided to the board so you would have further uh, data points to consider uh, ahead of making a formal decision on February 10th, I would also, if you would, Rhonda, scroll to the, the, the just start scrolling and I'll tell you when to stop. Right there. Uh, for 
for board members, uh, this was what you decided at your last board meeting ahead of the January 8th meeting. Um, the most of what was discussed involved this last one here. Uh, you, they were very comfortable in the end that you had arrived at uh, grandfathering for kindergartners through uh, fifth grade. Uh, not a major sticking point at all. Uh, what would be the sticking point is that right there, number five on the list. So um, the sentiment from my perspective was that uh, the parents, if you had a 60-40 split in regard to um, the district picking up the cost. 60% uh, of parents want the district to pay while you have 40% of those that responded to the surveys that don't want, that want, that they would prefer that um, they would transport themselves, I guess is the best way to put it. So at this point, I think that's the sticking point that the board has to work through. I would look to Mr. Barney and Mr. Soderberg to provide their Perception of what they saw in the room. Displayed it as it was presented. There were a lot of parents, I think, that well, everyone wanted grandfather. I understand that everyone's attached to their schools and they want to keep their kids. If you'll go back to page, go to this page rather than go back. <coughs> oh, okay. Right there. Uh, if you would scroll back down to right here, and if you could hit the plus button there. Uh, yes, it's right there. As you can see, the trend is moving up. Based on my conversations with Mr. Erickson and his knowledge of school funding and how all those things work, uh, and, our, and based on our conversations with Broadway, <coughs> I would let you know that I don't see that trend going backwards. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, based on the conversations with Rightway and their struggles to find bus drivers and their need to consistently increase the salaries or wages that they pay their bus drivers. You know, a transportation costs are going to continue to rise. Um, the, you know, I was surprised the number of people in the audience for that particular evening that didn't understand that the district's responsibilities in transportation uh, include uh, parochial. A lot of people didn't understand that there's federal laws out there that require public school districts to have to provide that transportation. So I appreciate uh, Mr. Erickson taking the time to break it down and be able to show the board. You know, you're already spending uh, significant dollars on an annual basis in regard to transportation. And while I understand why transportation is in place, uh, one of the things that I did explain to folks that were there in the audience that night is, uh, and I'll say it for the cameras, uh, Germantown School District uh, does a lot of things in transportation that you don't necessarily get in other school districts. Uh, that we are able to separate the student bodies by elementary, middle school, and high school it is not commonplace throughout the state of Wisconsin. That we don't have more students walking to school um, than we do. Germantown, um, you know, we don't max out in, in the buses uh, where we could. I think the board has done an exceptional job. The transportation committee's done an exceptional job in keeping riding times down as much as they possibly can. Um, you know, but it's one where, given everything that I currently know about transportation costs and providing those things, you know, you're probably going to have to find ways to start driving down the cost. And uh, given what we know about the school population growing, uh, you know, it, I see.
see where this is going to continue to only grow. And it's probably going to grow faster than the last uh, 10 years have occurred. While you've, you've seen a almost a 9% increase over 10 years, I think probably over the next 10 years, you could see that anywhere from 12 to 15% increase in all likelihood. So thank you for sharing that. Um, and I think the board and certainly the transportation committee is fully aware of that or we've got nothing but opportunities in the, in the busing and transportation area. But what is the specific increase um, year over year for the grandfather? Is it the 116,000 right above that? Three uh, routes. Yeah, yeah. Three routes. And it could go down year <coughs> after year for all those students. Your only problem is is that you have to take into account also that your district is starting to grow, that you're probably going to be adding buses. While those may drop off, you will still, based on the demographics that we're seeing, you know, your student populations are about to increase, which generally leads to more buses. So the first block that says no grandfathering is rightways analysis of what the routes will look like with no grandfathering. So next year. So the next two tables you have to compare it to that, which is what the note is underneath the three of them. Compare these tables to the no grandfathering. So you are correct. The third table compared to the no grandfathering says that's 116, right? Yeah, yep. 117 probably. Yep. So, okay. And then uh, we'll be deciding that on February 10th, right? Mm -hmm. okay. No, I my my takeaway from that uh, final meeting or all the meetings. I just first I want to applaud the transportation committee for uh, going down this path. Everybody on the team did a or on the committee did a wonderful job. Uh, I truly enjoyed uh, the listening sessions that I participated in. It was great hearing from the moms and dads. I think they appreciated us listening, um, so it was good for all. Um, and the last meeting that we had, Jeff, you did a wonderful job in communicating. Um, and I think it's just sharing the news, whether it's good or bad. And you know, the board's got to make a decision: uh, do we want to spend one hundred seventeen thousand uh, dollars to transport the kids that are being grandfathered? You know, already we already know it's going to be a very tight budget year for us. It's a difficult decision. But I'm glad that we did. We went down this path. I'm glad that we had the sessions that we did. Um, it's good to know. So, Tom, you have a question. Appreciate it, Mr. Harrison. When you met with Rightway, did they give you any information on what ride times might be based on, you know, if we did grandfather only fifth grade? They did. Uh, they said that there was some increased ride time. Is, it, is that in the, the footnotes? It's a little small for me to read any of those, even on my own. Did they yeah. reference the right time? The comment in the, in the footnotes is increased in group stops for appropriate terms of the timing. I think that might just be one of their, their methods to <coughs> try to not make the right time so much of an increase. I'm trying to think, Jeff. I, d I don't think that <coughs> was specific, but I think we should follow up with right way yeah. and see if we can. So we're not seeing the wrong thing. Right. Camera, it, can no grandfathering versus grandfathering of fifth grade only. The the columns are the same, so it's the same number of routes. So if we're adding additional students, there has to be additional ride time. And well, I'm just wondering what that could be. It goes from well, there's an additional of three buses. Three buses if we grandfather first or fifth grade. But the middle column matches the no grandfather. Well, you'll do additional fact finding and yeah, we'll do the more packets for the February time. Yeah. Yep. Ray and Mike, I know you guys were at the uh, listening sessions as well. Any thoughts, comments on your feedback? Yes, we do. For myself, um, I know how tight the budget is in other areas, and I think just.
comments? Moving on to item six, finance committee. Michael. Yes, the finance committee did meet this evening. It was a uh, relatively brief uh, committee meeting, but we did have a presentation, so that adds a little bit of time. Anyway, uh, we approved uh, uh, insurance for um, cyber insurance coverage for the district. Uh, we really did not have to do a motion on it because it was total was under $15,000, so I'm not bringing anything forward for the whole board. Rick's just going to do it. He could have done it on his own, but I think he's, you know, at the position where he wants us uh, to have a little more detail on what he's doing and what's going on, so I was nice and thank you for that, Rick. Yeah, I would definitely invite those folks back afterwards. The only other thing to report is uh, some good news. Uh, TID District 4 has been retired, and Rick received a check from the village of Germantown for $762,724. And uh, we did make some, at, at first I thought that was going right to fund balance, but we did actually uh, account for those funds. Comments from the board. All right, moving on to item seven, new business. Discussion and action regarding school district property naming rights. Mr. Holmes. Yes, administration is bringing forward two items in regard to naming areas of the Germantown School District properties. Uh, outdoor learning space at Amy Bell Elementary School and the varsity softball field at Kennedy Middle School. Uh, in collaboration with the Mashman family and Sandy Dobrowski, uh, we want to bring forward for board consideration the naming of the outdoor learning space that we fell to be the Mashman Nature Center and the varsity softball field at KMS to be the Kurt Raguzzi Field. Uh, I, we attached uh, additional information for board consideration in your packet. Uh, the background information is very self-explanatory. I greatly appreciate the efforts of uh, the Mashman family and also Sandy. Uh, Dobrogowski uh, in bringing these things forward uh, for your consideration. Uh, my recommendation would be to approve the naming of the outdoor learning space at Amy Bell Elementary School to Mashman Nature Center and Varsity Softball Field at Kennedy Middle School to Kirk Raguzzi Field with the signage for those locations provided through donated private funded, funding and in accordance with Board Policy 7250. We all if, if the board would like to speak to uh, probably Mr. Mashman first. Uh, he's here to answer any questions that you may have. I know that he and uh, Bonnie have been doing some work in terms of looking into signage and what could be placed there. And Do you mind coming forward? Good evening. And before he speaks, I do want to remind the board and thank again Mr. Mashman and Bonnie and uh, Mr. Walters as well uh, for working with us in the manner that they did. Had they not uh, moved quickly um, in regard to this, I think Mr. Mashman and I, we've had conversations over time about given both of our experiences over the years and these types of things that we were able to move at lightning speed where that was concerned. <laughs> so, and I, you know, he and Mr. Mashman and Ms. Walters are both uh, retirees of Germantown School District. And, uh, they have a special place in their heart for seeing the Nature Center evolve into an exceptional outdoor learning space. So with that, Mr. Mashman. And before you talk, you know, you shared some things when we were out on the field many, many months ago that I didn't know that you've got a legacy at Amy Bell School. If you could just share that too, that would be wonderful. I, <coughs> excuse me. My family has been involved with Amyville School since the Civil War. I went to Amyville School with my siblings. My father went to Amyville School with his siblings. And my grandfather went to Amyville School with his siblings. Uh, I grew up on the farm, kitty corner from Amyville School. 
so uh, have had a long history. Three generations of my uh, ancestors were school board presidents. Uh, at times, after I retired, people wanted me to run for the school board. And they chose to end that streak. <laughs> <laughs> so it it was a surprise when this opportunity came up, and uh, you can all be thankful there are cows still in our barn. Uh, the cows are what kept the subdivision from being completed. We knew that uh, the last quarter of that subdivision, uh, Willowgate. The people that would want to live there would not want those cows right across the road. And so we've held up on that a while. So that was available. We did take a chance, uh, kind of a risk. We don't know exactly what this uh, change in the subdivision uh, design will cause in the future. But because my family has a long history and we saw it as an opportunity to help the community acted relatively quickly on that one that went fast and uh, we chose not to protract negotiations on it but make it happen and my family uh, long history of farmers after I grew up on the farm uh, and became a teacher I started traveling and you know when you're milking cows you can't travel so as a youngster I never had to travel so then my wife and I, and then later with our kids, we would go camping in the national parks and became more interested in nature and combining the school district and the education of uh, youth in the community and our interest in nature seemed like a natural to do this. Any questions? No, I, I want to thank you. Um, if it hadn't been for that guy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think we, we, we solved the solution for Amy Bell with a three-track school, and we couldn't have done that without your help and your land. So I want to thank you on behalf of the Germantown School District for everything that you did. And I think by doing this, by naming this, I think it's a wonderful tribute to your family going forward. We thank you for that. Uh, I'm also thankful for my great-grandparents and my grandparents on the other side of my family. Both uh, grandparents had farms in the area, and uh, it just put us in a position to be able to develop out here. And my family history has always been one of trying to help the community, which is, of course, why I became a teacher and a coach. And you mentioned the softball thing. I, too, was varsity softball coach. I, I think I, I lose track of the years. I think <laughs> I spent 20 some years coaching softball. So uh, it's a great opportunity to, to uh, give back to the community in my own crude sort of way. I've kind of taken the mantra, if you don't help people when you can, what good are you? And you certainly helped us, so thank you for that. So. Yes, I, I'd like to thank you also because, uh, as Bob said, it was my idea. It's an idea that I floated and sort of blindsided Bob with, but Bob and Jeff really, you know, took took on the challenge and, and talked to you and between the three of you, you worked it out. So I thank you for that because it, it sort of makes me look good, it, even though I wasn't the guy, I was only the idea guy, I didn't actually do any of the, the work, and so I appreciate that, that this all worked out and we were able to be in the three-track school, and as you know, we really needed it hadn't kept it a three track school, we would have really been in trouble with the guards and boundary redrawings. And uh, I think at this point, uh, someday if we need to, we can make it a four track school. So I've heard that. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. So thank you very much. I appreciate the fact that uh, you felt com comfortable throwing out a kind of a from left field to, <laughs> to use that fun uh, idea. My experience in both on the farm and then it took me a while to learn some, uh, get some respect when I was coaching or teaching that 
it's really important for organizations to have free-flowing thinking and uh, allow people to feel comfortable to throw out crazy ideas from time to time. Because once in a while, you have a crazy idea, and you have a crazy idea, and somebody else says, hey, wait a minute, a piece of this and a piece of that, and a piece of something else could be a solution. And uh, I've always appreciated organizations that I've worked with that allow that to happen. Wonderful. Other questions, comments? Okay. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you for your appreciation. Great. Uh, it's up to the board, board's will if you want to take this separately. Yeah, I think we should do it separately. Okay. I'll entertain a motion um, on the naming rights for the outdoor learning center. <coughs> Sandy Dobrogowski, who's led the, led the call to rename Kurt Raguzzi Field. If you would like to go ahead and come on up, please, in case the board has any questions about what was provided in their background documents. Uh, again, like Mr. Mashman, she did a fantastic job of uh, pulling this all together and bringing forward the information that you need in order to make a good, solid decision. In that. So Thank with you. that, uh, welcome back. Thank Sandy. you. Thank you, everyone. Um, I was very pleased tonight, you've heard, you know, the last two times I was here to speak, and I'm very pleased tonight to have some alumni players of Kurtz here, as well as current players, our new varsity head coach, parents, um, and family, um, to support um, what I have presented. Again, softball is the main, you know, is the impetus of, of what we're doing here for what this man gave to our girls. But as I said each time I spoke to you, don't forget, or what I have in the middle of the presentation here, is the community impact that this man had. I don't have to re-state um, it to you. You can see what it is. But he did so much. Um, and I ask you to seriously consider um, what our ask is, and and that is to give him the the honor so richly deserved by naming that field the Kurt Raguzzi Field. So thank you for consideration. Thank you. Oh, any questions? None for me because I think it's more. Come on, you guys, I'm prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I think you gave us everything we needed last time. Thank you. Tom, thank you. And we did meet, and uh, speaking to both projects, uh, I, I've got very great assurances that both groups, both entities, will be able to fund this without mm -hmm. any issues whatsoever. Yeah. I'll entertain a motion. I move to approve the name of the Warriston Softball Field to a uh, Kurt Raguzzi Field with a signage for the application provided through uh, donated private funding in accordance with Board of Policy 725. Second. Discussion. I'll just say that uh, I've known Kurt for many, many years. He was the coach of my twin girls. Uh, he's a wonderful man. Uh, he'll be Miss Sorley. So I think this is pretty cool what you're doing. So. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. Moving on to 
Item D, discussion and action to approve open enrollment seats for the 2020-2021 school year. Mr. Holmes. Ms. Borst. I'll let you explain it. Let's open enrollment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, first Monday in February through the end of April.